the free world stands strong against aggression in Korea. Ethiopia, a member of the community of free nations, has sent men into the offensive against communism's armed attack. Ethiopia is helping to combat the menace in Korea. It is not strange that Ethiopians should be fighting aggression so far from home, for they have taken their rightful place among the free and independent nations of the world. At the Japanese peace conference, Ethiopian delegate Atu Mambara Yaharid tells the assembled nations that Ethiopia is happy to participate in signing a treaty which ends a terrible epic. They deliberated with representatives of other nations, and together they designed a document which offers Japan generosity in defeat, with new hope for a peaceful, prosperous future. Ethiopia's delegates contributed to a successful conference the wisdom and dignity of an ancient people. Recognition of Ethiopia as a factor on the world scene led to the recent signing of a treaty of friendship and commerce between Ethiopia and the United States. With Minister H.G. Akilu, Mr. Child signs the expression of goodwill and affirms U.S. respect for the African nation. Later at the Imperial Palace, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie receives the ambassador and his staff. His Imperial Majesty's signature completes the ceremony. To Korea, to support the UN cause, Ethiopia has sent a battalion of soldiers. Cheering Koreans greet the men who arrive together with replacements from three other nations. The brothers in arms were welcomed personally by the president of Korea, Sigmund Rhee. Previously, Ethiopia contributed $100,000 for medical assistance to the men of other nations already in the battle. One chap brought his instrument all the way from home. Ethiopian troops made a smart first impression in Korea. An Ethiopian officer reported the morale of his men was very high and that they were anxious to participate in this operation. All of his men are volunteers and additional units and replacements are being sent to Korea periodically. Here the battalion's first campsite is established. This rough Korean terrain is an ideal training ground for an introduction to Korean battle conditions. To make the several United Nations forces a more efficient team, everyone uses the same types of weapons and ammunition. This means getting acquainted with new or slightly different equipment. Hence the preliminary orientation course for already well-trained soldiers. UN officers said they welcome this effective addition to their fighting strength. They commented that the Ethiopians' previous training at home, where the rugged mountains are similar to those in Korea, would add to the know-how of the United Nations forces. The men accustom themselves to UN signal equipment. The international force must be in constant touch by telephone and radio. This classroom, just behind the front lines, was a battleground half a year ago. This man is getting acquainted with his newly acquired accessory called a canteen cup. Foot soldiers working with tanks are making important gains in Korea. The men get an insight into the effectiveness of the new combat equipment. Time out before going into battle for ceremonies celebrating His Imperial Majesty's birthday. An officer reads a message from the Emperor. 
Dances reminiscent of happy moments at home are the order of the day. Visiting Americans accept challenges to a friendly bit of sport. The men collect their equipment and assemble for the trip to the battlefront. Soon they will be fighting alongside other soldiers from the United Nations. With their aid, the communist aggressors will be repulsed. Poised for the attack, Ethiopia's men are in close contact with troops from the other nations. Side by side, they enter the battle. The troops successfully come through their first baptism of fire. Ethiopia, realizing communism's threat to independent peoples, will uphold its contribution to the free world. Ethiopia's faith in collective security has been affirmed. The presence of its men in Korea reinforced the principle of the UN Charter that aggression to succeed anywhere is a threat to free peoples everywhere.